Hello humans of the internet, my name is Iceberg Lettuce, our editor is Burnt French Toast, and welcome to a random toaster. So you know how there are all the different colors of dyes in Minecraft? You got red, you got blue, you got light blue. Well, me and Burnt French Toast got to talking about what would happen if they added some new colors. You see, that number's been stuck at 16 for quite a long time now, so I think we're well overdue for a few new colors. So what will these new colors be? Well, that's what this video is. What if they added new colors of dyes into Minecraft? Let's get started. So since there are 16 colors right now, and that's a nice even multiple of 8, we think it would be best if we added 8 new colors right now. The first of these is Maroon. Maroon is sort of like red, but a little darker. As such, it's crafted by combining a red dye with a black dye in any crafting grid. I made the dye look a little bit like fire, I guess, because it's a pretty warm color. Hot. Alright, next up we got Fuchsia. So if you take a look at pink currently in Minecraft, it's a pretty soft color. That's pretty nice, but what if you want to use a hot pink? I didn't think the name hot pink fit very well with the other color names in Minecraft, so we went with Fuchsia. Fuchsia is crafted with a red dye and a pink dye in a crafting grid, and it looks a little bit like a heart because, uh, it's pink, I guess? Have you ever looked at orange things in Minecraft and thought, that looks a little too orange? Well, probably not, but I think that sometimes, so how about peach dye? Peach is sort of like a softer orange, so it's crafted with an orange dye and a white dye. It looks like this because, I don't know, I just kind of drew a random shape. It's not important. I have a lot of favorite colors, but one of my favorite favorite colors is green. Unfortunately for me, however, the greens in Minecraft right now are kind of ugly. Lime green is much too bright, and dark green is just a muddy, gross color. Ew. So, how about a new green? I call it teal. It's somewhere in between green and blue, but a little closer to green than cyan is. Since cyan is crafted with a regular green and blue, teal is crafted with a lime green and a blue. It's shaped the way it is because I thought it looked cool. Alright, so let's take a look at our blues. We've got light blue, regular blue, what about dark blue? No. Okay, how about indigo instead? Indigo is sort of in between blue and purple, so as such, it's crafted with a blue and purple. It's pretty dark too, which I think is a nice color that we don't really have covered by any other block. It's shaped the way it is shaped because, I don't know, it kinda looks like water, I guess? Eh, I just kinda shape these things randomly, it's not really that important. Alright, alright, hear me out here. What if we took indigo, that's sort of in between blue and purple, and we made it pastel and light? I'd call it periwinkle. Yeah, that sounds nice to me. Periwinkle dye has a fluffy shape, and there are two ways to craft it. You can either combine indigo and white dye, or you can combine light blue and lavender. Uh, wait, did I say lavender? Yeah, lavender, that's our next color. It's one of Burnt's favorite colors, so I'll let him take it from here. Lavender is the objectively best color, and if you say otherwise I will commit a war crime with a spoon. This blessed color can be crafted by combining both purple and white dyes. The dye looks fluffy, just like periwinkle, but better. Unfortunately, it is now time for Iceberg to talk about different, smellier colors. All right, next up is the most exciting color of all, so sit down for this one. It is beige. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's beige, very exciting. I was hesitant about adding beige to this list because it's kind of close to some of the strip log colors, but you know what, I think it's far enough away that it deserves to be its own color. Beige is crafted by combining a brown dye and a white dye, and it's shaped like an oval because it's boring. Alright, so those are all the new colors, but you can't have some new dyes without also having some new flowers, so let's talk about which dyes are getting some new flowers. First up is the Hydrangea, which is a big fluffy looking flower. This one gives you periwinkle dye. Next up is the Chrysanthem- Next up is the Chrysanthem- Next up is the Chrysanthem- Next up is the Chrysanthemum, the Chrysanthemum. It kind of looks like a rose, and it gives you fuchsia dye. And last, but not least, but also not most, is the Carnation, which gives you peach dye. It's okay, I guess. Also, while we're here, let's talk about some changes to crafting dyes that aren't flowers. At the moment, beetroot gives you red dye, but since it's such a dark color, I think it would fit better to give you some maroon. That would make beetroot a little bit more useful. Still not useful, though. At the moment, the Allium gives you magenta, which is the worst color of all, so we've got to change that one to lavender instead. Also, throwing a prismarine shard into a furnace or whatever will now give you a teal dye. And since chorus flowers are so useless, they can give you purple dye. Also, while we're here, have you ever noticed that there's this flower called a white tulip and it gives you light gray dye even though it's called the white tulip? Y yeah, we're changing that one, it gives you white dye now. Also, throwing yellow and blue in a crafting grid now gives you green. I don't really know why that's not the case before, I'm pretty sure yellow and blue make green from my kindergarten art classes. 
Well that was a pretty quick video, but thanks for watching. If you want to hear more from me and Burnt, check out our Twitters in the description below. Also, if you like talking about video games like Minecraft and stuff like that with some pretty cool people, check out our Discord in the description too. Thanks for watching and see you next time, Toasties.